I get a lot of questions on counterpoise wires, lengths, how many to put down, what do they do? You know, I've done a few videos on this and I, I keep getting this question over and over again. So it's time to do a new one. And in honor of that, I've done a really deep dive this past uh, week or so and read a lot of papers and done a lot. And um, kind of the same thing, I'm gonna go over it again, but uh, maybe I can give people a little bit of a clearer understanding and, and talk about a really technical thing in real simple terms. I'm gonna do that now, stick around. Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of questions lately on counterpoise wires. How long should they be? How many should I have on the ground? What the heck do they actually do? Kind of want to go over that real in, in layman's terms. I've done a lot of research over the past week or so. You know, there's a couple great videos out there that I've watched. Uh, Callum McCormick, DX Commander, has done two or three of them. One of them is a lot of what I'm getting ready to tell you is just me regurgitating some stuff I've learned from him. And I'll, I'll put the link to his video below. He turned me on to Rudy Severns, and Rudy Severns uh, is uh, N6LF. Uh, he's written a ton of papers and articles, and a lot of them that are published for ARRL, and really, that's kind of where he got his knowledge from. I've gone back and really read through that over the last few days of Rudy's stuff, um, and it's really interesting. And I kind of want to give a uh, my thoughts on what I gathered from it and kind of simplify it and um, and explain to you my feelings, my thoughts, and maybe give you a better understanding of counterpoise wires. Now we're talking about counterpoise wires on the ground and their relationship to the ground and what they do with a vertical antenna. So I know someone's going to go, you should use raised radials. I'm not talking about radials. That's cool. I know they're probably an antenna with raised radials is, is I'm sure awesome. I personally don't do that because I'm next to salt water. We'll get into that too. I'll explain uh, what's going on with that. But um, if you're into raised radials, that's great. This isn't that video. So you don't need to put in the comments anything about raised radials. I get that all the time. And I'm like, no, no, you not. You don't understand. We're talking about counterpoise. Let's start off with what a counterpoise is. A counterpoise is basically um, with a vertical antenna. It's as the power goes, their driven element, an antenna is a circuit. Let's start there. We'll start with a dipole. Let's compare it with a dipole. A dipole antenna, if you look at what's going on with RF current in, it, in that circuit, um, it's flowing and it's going from positive to negative, negative to positive, positive, negative. What's going on is it's kind of like a capacitive side and an output side and it's going out. So you turn that over, you take that same antenna and you turn it over. Yeah, it's not a balanced dipole, but it's still doing the same thing. That It's still a circuit. I don't care what anyone says. If you don't have some sort of counterpoise, that circuit's going to find a way and find something to counter the, the other side. Um, an infant halfway, for instance, the, 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 um, the, the coax itself, the outer shield of coax is acting as a counterpoise and with other antennas as well. So... With a vertical antenna, as you have the driven element that's that's driving the signal out there, below you is the other side. It's kind of a mirror of that, and that circuit's going in, out, and then back out, and off, off she goes. Think of that counter, those counterpoise wires or counterpoise, if it's one or whatever, kind of being capacitive. Like it's holding, it's like, here it goes the signal, it's coming back in, it's holding, boom, it's going back out as it's as the RF is flowing. An easy way to look at that is if you have really like bad counterpoise wires or your coax is acting as a counterpoise wire, think of a runner. That runner is like in mud trying to get up some speed and take off and, and it's not going to perform very well. Think of that same starting blocks with a sprinter. You got the best, you have the best uh, set of counterpoise or whatever it is on, on the ground that you can possibly have. Boom, you're going to get an amazing takeoff and, uh, and your signal is going to get out there better. So that's kind of an easy way to look at it, a way I like to look at it, because um, it's kind of, it's not exactly what's happening, but it kind of gives you in your mind what's going on. I need those great starting blocks or that starting block counter counterpoise on the side to take off and, and go for me. Now, how many should you use? That's another great question. Uh, looking at Rudy Severn's um, uh, text and, and then also watching Callum, the ex-commander's videos, um, one, one of the things they, they both kind of come to the agreement on is there's a, a point where 
too, too many counterpoints are, are not good and are, are, are doing you no good. You're not getting enough, uh, I'll call it juice for the squeeze or bang for the buck by adding more and more and more and more. Um, through Rudy's, uh, I, I, let's start, let's go back even more. The AM transmitters that, tra that back all the way back like the 30s, you know, the design of those things were like hundreds of, of counterpoise wires all underneath. I mean, and granted, these guys were putting out 50,000 watts or in that neighborhood or thousands of watts to broadcast at AM. Here at Ham Radio, we're putting out anywhere from QRP, one, two, three, five watts to 20 to 100 portable. We're talking portable here. Some people go out portable with more than 100 watts, but we're going to stay. Let's just go from, say, the QRP to 100 watt range. And how many to put down and what they're doing and what you're getting. I put together this pretty, after looking at, at the data from Rudy Severns and, and also watching Callum, he kind of came with these same numbers as well. I put together a little cheat sheet, not really a cheat sheet, but kind of a theoretical overview of how many counterpoise to put on the ground. Now, if you look at this thing, you'll see quarter the, the, the length of these is a quarter wave. These are not resonant, and I'm not saying cut your counterpoise wires the quarter wavelength. I'm just kind of using that to the guide. And so four of these, four quarter wave um, counterpoise on the ground are going to be one wavelength. So one wavelength, and, and for this we're talking in decibels, would be one dB for this antenna. So if you doubled that and you put eight down, we're only going to 1.6 dB. Double that, and we're only getting 2.2 dB gain for this antenna because of the counterpoise. Double that, and then you know 2.4, 64 of these, and you go and you got 2.5 dB gain. So let's talk about portable operations and what is what is sensible and what's going on here. Um, there are other factors. You, you got to realize too that the other thing is is these things are conducting. They're basically on on soil, your soil soil that you're near. Um, if you see the chart, I'll put this thing back up. The, the chart I put up there, I also put salt water there. It's kind of apples and oranges, and I'll explain that a little bit more. But um, that 6 to 10 dB for salt water, it's kind of from a lot of different texts, a lot of things that I've read. And you got to remember, too, salt water, the salinity of salt water at the ocean is different than in a bay. That's different than it's in a salt water river. The salinity, salinity goes down as you're coming inland. So you're going to get less gain. Now, what's happening there? And what's happening with the counterpoise wires? Well, the FCC put out, has been out for years, puts down a, uh, a map of the USA if you're an American and shows you um, the quality of the soil below you uh, throughout the entire United States. It's a really neat map and it's been updated. It's in color now. You can go online and find it. I'll try to put a, um, I'll try to put a link below to it and, um, and show it to you, but it's a great map. And um, what we're doing here now, you, you get by the ocean and that, goes like haywire when you're by salt water. Uh, the, the salinity of salt water increases what's going on below it. So think of the counterpoise that are on the ground as like a paper towel absorbing. They're connecting together. They're coupling. Those counterpoise that you put on the ground are coupling with earth. That's why I said we were going to talk about raised radials. That, so it's using the earth as part of the counter as well. The better you couple to it, the better off you are. So as you, you know, you've got your 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 paper towel on the ground there, or whatever we'll call it. I and mean, some people use screen or whatever to couple with the earth. That coupling effect increases, as I showed you, dB, you know, and how much gain you're getting. What it's doing is the better below you, the better. Like this, like the sprinter out of out of the box. This thing's coming down. The capacitive of the wave. You got a lot left. Boom! You got a great signal, and um, and you're getting out. You're 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 really you're putting putting out there. So, kind of look at it that way. That's kind of in simple terms. Now, how many should you put down portable? I only put down four or five if I'm not by the water. If I'm by the water, I put down one. Why one by the water? Because it's all you need. We'll just call one at salt water the uh, extra absorbent <laughs> counterpoise wire. It's kind of like I've played around. I have put a lot of them down before, and then I've come back and put one before, and just from experience, I don't think I need that many. And I know I've seen other people do it. I've built oh, literally, you know, almost 100 antennas maybe by the ocean. And, uh, that, and I know for just from experience that that one works. So I, when I was showing that chart and I said apples and oranges, 
the theory on the other one has had has Rudy Severn's actual experimentation and calculation and measurements on it for the land base one. That's kind of really what I want to talk about. So let's talk about portables. Do you need more? Do you need 16, 32, 64 when you're portable? Listen, from let's just say you have four down, you have one dB, and you put down 16, and you have uh, 2.2 dB. You know what is 1.2 dB gain really giving you? And remember. 6 dB is one S unit. So for simplicity and for, for to just get out and enjoy uh, portable and, and making it easy, there's nothing wrong with putting down, say, four. Now, I say four, and as I show in the chart at a quarter wavelength, it's, length does not matter. Once you get down on the ground, you're the extra absorbent tissue, and you're part of the earth around you, and you're connected to it. So I... You can use any length you want. I would try to, I mean, just keep it at least a wavelength worth. So if you're putting up a 20 meter, uh, a, a, a vertical for 20 meters, a quarter wave vertical, which is only going to be, let's just say five meters, put 20 meters worth of wire underneath you if you can. If you can't, put what you can down. It's all about that ground and making that connection and get, getting out. That's really what it's all about. And, um, and and that's that's where I'm at. I personally, like I said, I built a ton of antennas. I was over in Poland working. I had a backyard ne for two almost two years while I was over there. I never was anywhere near salt water. I built a few verticals out there, and I would just do four, five, maybe six if I had an extra piece of wire laying around. Spread it out on the ground. I was way inland. I was probably fifteen to twenty miles from the Baltic, and the Baltic is not exactly as salty as the Atlantic or whatever. It got great results from it. Well, there you go. If you want to do a really good deep dive on this, go check out Rudy Severn's website. Uh, I'll put a link to it below. I mean, you can really, there's a lot there. And um, you don't need to listen to a talking head on YouTube. You can get into it and really learn from him. As well, um, Callum's, a lot of that's going to be what I just talked about. Callum McCormick, DX Commander, great uh got a lot of good videos out on the subject because he sells vertical antennas that's what that's his business but um good stuff there too i'll put a link to uh the, one of his videos and you can go for you may have seen it go look at other ones after that for sure but anyway just wanted to get that out there hopefully that'll kind of give somebody will get something out of this and an understanding and uh kind of help understand counterpoise wires a little bit better anyway Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Walt, K4OGO. All the best in 73, my friends.